It appears as though humans have cooked food since there were humans, which makes a lot of sense. Because if you have one group of people who eat everything raw and another group that eats everything cooked, chances are the ones that eat everything raw are all going to die off. Because one of the important things about cooking is safety. There are bacteria in food. You kill an animal, for instance, or you pick something out of the dirt. And those bacteria can cause food poisoning, which almost all of us have had at one time or another. It's very unpleasant. In fact, too much of that can give you even more serious illnesses than just food poisoning. If you cook food to 70 degrees centigrade, okay, and since there's still all of America, like where I'm from, that only really thinks in Fahrenheit, that's 160 degrees Fahrenheit, you will kill virtually, will kill all the bacteria. That's sort of your safety level. Now, sometimes maybe you don't want to cook things that, that far. Hopefully it's nice and fresh and safe and you'll be fine. So safety is a big reason for cooking food. The other is digestibility. When you cook things, you change them from one substance to another, and I'll describe that in a little more detail. But it makes it easier for your body to digest it. Third reason is preservation. If I have some hunk of, of raw meat and I have a piece of cooked meat, the cooked meat is going to stay edible for a longer period of time than the raw meat, particularly if I cooked it in a couple different ways. Salting makes an environment so salty that um, nothing can eat it. And most of the salt products, before you actually would eat it, you soak it in water to try to get rid of a lot of the salt. Or smoking, another way to preserve meats for a much longer period of time. This is called a smoker. And the key is that you put the wood underneath. And you make special wood, wood that has great flavor, like hickory. And then there's a pan of water here. As long as you keep water in there, the temperature inside always stays below 100 centigrade, 220 Fahrenheit. And this means you can slowly cook your meat all day at a wonderful smoke temperature. Now, because we had a whole pig, these are a part of the pig most people never see. This is actually the cheeks. But the nice thing about it is it has some really yummy meat inside of it. Oh, man, that's looking pretty good. All right, so we took a whole hog and we actually went to the place where they had slaughtered it and hung it and put it up and we took off the head, we took off the feet and this is 130 pounds of awesomeness. And it's been cooking pretty much all day. And at this point, we're gonna find out, is it done? We gotta get this into the, the deep part of the muscle. Right, temperature's going up. Looking good. Yes, it's over 160, because that's the magic number for pork to make sure to kill all of anything that possibly could be bad inside of it. One of the important things of why you cook things is so you make it safer. It also makes it much more delicious. So we're actually very good. We're all the way up to 190 Fahrenheit. So this pig is done. Now we'll just slowly keep it warm, let the fat soak through with some extra hickory flavored smoke from our forest. So if I cook carbohydrates, I can get to a very important reaction called caramelization. This is the process by which first a carbohydrate, which has a bunch of chains of glucose, gets broken down and the sucrose changes to glucose and fructose. Now those are regular old sugars. Those are the sugars that you taste like when you eat a sugar cube. Like this one. So turning the carbohydrates into sugars is one step. And this happens at the temperature range of maybe 110 
to 180 centigrade. Of course, we want to put this into Fahrenheit as well. So this is maybe 230F to 356F. This caramelization is first just creating those sugars. But then around this number, this magic number, the next thing happens. If I heat the sugar cube, so put a torch on it here, it actually turns into this golden brown liquid, caramel. And since all foods, all carbohydrates can be converted to sugars, and all those sugars have the potential of going into this brown color, this is where a huge amount of taste of what you enjoy eating comes out. Because right at this temperature, you get an intense sweet flavor. I think you know that. If you actually ate the sugar cube, is it sweet? Sure. If you actually tasted this, the caramel, the intenseness of that sugar and the ability in your body to recognize that and say, wow, that is something really tasty. So that happens at 180. Now, very interesting. If I get up to about 188, I'm losing the sweet spot here. This will still be sweet, and this is at about 370 Fahrenheit. But at this point, the intenseness of the sweetness is going away. If I get a bit higher, if I get to 204 centigrade, which is 400 Fahrenheit, it starts turning bitter. And if I keep going, it's going to just plain turn to carbon. It's just going to turn black and taste extremely burnt. And that is uh, about 410. So when you cook things, you almost always in the oven, they always say, put the oven at 350 in Fahrenheit or probably 180 in centigrade. And that's because you're going to be slightly caramelizing the sugars into the intense types of flavors and tastes that you like. Don't put the oven too high because it'll burn. So this is a pan of bread and you want to bake it. And there's another interesting thing that happens in cooking and baking. Bread rises. And that's because you've actually put a little critter in it, yeast, and as it eats the sugar, it makes carbon dioxide. And why is that important? Well, if I now cut through a piece of bread, you can see all these air bubbles. And those air bubbles are that CO2 that was produced, and as you bake it, right, the CO2, the, the dough turns the carbohydrates cross-link, they become a bit sweeter because of this caramelization reaction. And you notice that even around the very top, you start getting this brown crust, which again is part of this reaction going to the higher temperatures. And the air bubbles are inside. They're really CO2 bubbles from the CO2 from the yeast. Well, you know, bread, caramelization, that's kind of the boring stuff. The really good stuff is grilling meat. What happens when you take uh, this, it looks pretty yummy, but uh, obviously raw, and you want to turn it in to this? Man, I don't know about you, but I'm getting hungry. So the process that does this is a reaction called the Maillard reaction. I've got to pronounce, pronounce dumb. And this reaction is fairly complex, but it has to do with both when you have proteins like meats and you have the uh, carbohydrates, the starches, and that's pretty much all foods are going to have these two things. Okay? You have the proteins and carbohydrates and you heat them and you begin getting a series of complex reactions, this whole Maillard reaction chain. But that's the key that is going to take the proteins, going to turn them to sugars, and it's actually going to make them much more digestible in the process. Now, if I take just protein, like egg white, and I cook it, 
you all know, because I'm sure you've done it, that you're, it's going to turn into something harder, right? The egg white goes from a liquid at the right temperature to something that's solid. Well, eggs are a little bit different because most of the time when you cook the proteins, you will unravel them. They will, will fall apart. And that falling apart aids in digestions because this reaction will take the proteins and break them down into things your bodies can use directly, like the amino acids. So the cooking process aids in your ability to digest it. It also unlocks a whole rich cast of various flavors. In eggs, what happens is those proteins unwrap, but then they join up with others. It's like you had a bunch of small little packets, and now as they unravel, they link together and cross-link. So even though, in a way, you're breaking down the protein, you've enabled them to cross-link, and that's why an egg white turns into a solid when it's cooked. But of course, if you ever heat anything far enough, you'll burn it and basically turn it back into the carbon and elemental compounds that it was in the beginning. That's what you need to know about grilling, cooking, smoking.